Getting started, you're going to need one yard of heavier weight fabric. I recommend canvas or twill and also one yard of lining. One 16 inch zipper. One magnetic button snap. Three yards of one inch webbing. One one inch strap adjuster and two one inch D-rings two one inch lobster clips or any one inch clip will work. And lastly, you need your pattern and this pattern is available at ProfitFitClothing.com. Super easy to use, just download it, print it and you're ready to go. And the links for all the supplies will be in the description, so definitely go check that out. Getting started, go ahead and trace and cut out your pattern. Make sure to cut lining for your side panel, your zipper panels, and your main panel. And cut two of each for your pocket panels and your pocket flap. Start by grabbing all your pocket panels and what you're going to do is place the right sides together for the left side and the right side on that center panel. Pin it together and then sew along those edges. And you're going to want to sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. Fold the seam allowances towards the center and top stitch on that center panel on both sides. Then go ahead and repeat this process for the other set of pocket panels and what you're going to do is place the right sides together and sew across that top edge. Flip the wrong sides back together and make sure that all the edges are even and that top is nice and flat and then go ahead and top stitch all the way across that top edge. Watch this. Oh. Hallelujah. Grab your two flat panels and there's two ways you can do this. You can either put them right sides together and sew all the way around the outside edge and then flip it right side back out or you can place them wrong sides together and bias tape all the way around the outside edge. We're gonna show you the second option. So we're gonna be using a double fold bias tape binder to clean up those edges. And you can definitely get these for domestic sewing machines too. We're gonna to have links in the description. So go ahead and cut out long pieces of bias tape that are the right measurements to the width of your binder. The other option is to use a bias tape making kit. And this is where you pretty much just make your own bias tape. And it comes with a presser foot that helps you attach the bias tape to your garment. And it's pretty simple to use. All you have to do is cut a strip, feed it through, and iron it. And after that, it works the same as the bias tape. You just fold it over and sew it on, or you use that attachment. And it's super easy to do. All you have to do is feed that edge through the bias tape binder, and you're good to go. And you can totally do whatever option you feel comfortable with. It's up to you. But just make sure you leave that top edge open. It was like the Lord spoke that. Grab your pocket panel, your main panel, and your flat panel. What you're going to do is line them up on your main panel. It's going to hang over just a little bit. You want it to do that because it's going to make it easier to sew on. And we're going to line those up so that way we can get a point for where to put that magnetic button. And we want that snap to fall towards the bottom of the flap. So what we're going to do is mark it with chalk on the flat panel and then put it down on the pocket panel on the same place so that way they line up. So take the back side of that snap and use it on the pocket side and you're going to feed those prongs through that fabric. And you're going to want to cut little slits for those prongs with scissors. And only do this on one side of the pocket. And once you get it through, you're going to take your back piece and it's going to feed into those prongs and then you push those prongs towards the outside.
And with the other side of the button, we're gonna do the same exact thing for the flap. And make sure you go in through the top when you're installing it. Grab the main panel lining and cover, place those together, then place the pocket and flap over that and sew all the way around the outside edge. And I recommend pinning it so that way everything stays lined up. Grab your zipper panels, both the outside and the lining, and you're only gonna need two of them to start. So take your lining, place it on the back of the zipper and the right side of the outer layer on the front side of the zipper. Pin it on and sew across that edge. And make sure you have the zipper panel in the center of that zipper. Then go ahead and fold those panels towards the outside and top stitch along that edge. Then grab your other two zipper panels and we're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side and make sure that you have the zipper panels lined up exactly. Fold those panels out and top stitch along that edge. Cut a 22 inch piece of webbing, grab your two D rings and your side panel and you're going to want to mark in three quarters of an inch on both sides. Feed the webbing through one of the D rings and place the edge of that D ring on one of your edge marks. And you want to make sure the raw side of the webbing is touching the right side of the fabric so that way it's hidden. And make sure that webbing is centered all the way down that side panel and do the same thing on the opposite side with the other D ring. And once you're satisfied with your alignment, go ahead and pin that down. And we're gonna be sewing across that webbing, down, across the other side, and back up. And make sure you stick close to those edges. And I like to do a few back and forth stitches on the side by the D-ring, because there's gonna be a lot of tension there, it's gonna make it a lot stronger. Grab both of your main side panels and then grab your zipper panel, place the right sides together, sandwiching that zipper panel in between the lining and the outside layer. And you're gonna wanna sew that shorter edge over the zipper. Once you have that sewn on, you can go ahead and snip the zipper end off. Flip the side panels down and go ahead and add a top stitch along that seam. Now we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side. Just go ahead and invert those side panels and pin it on. Before you start sewing, make sure that zipper train is moved towards the inside of that panel. Go ahead and trim that zipper, flip the right sides out, and top stitch along that edge. Grab your main panel and your side panel, mark the centers on both the side panel and the main panel, and what you wanna do is line those centers up and pin all the way around the outside edge. and then go ahead and sew along that entire outside edge. This part can be a little bit tricky, so definitely just take your time. At 
this point, I like to pop the right side out just to make sure that all the edges are completely sewn and it's not missing any layers. Grab the other two main panels, the outer and the lining, place them together and sew as close as you can to the outside edge. And again, mark the centers on the back main panel and the centers on the side panel. Line those up and pin all the way around the outside. And once you have it pinned on, go ahead and sew all the way around the outside edge. And to finish off the inside, you're going to want to add the bias tape along these inside edges on both sides. This will give extra strength on those seams and make it look professional on the inside. Once you added the bias tape, go ahead and flip the right side out. Grab 48 inches of your one inch webbing and what you're going to do is feed it through your lobster clip and fold it back over on itself so that way the raw edge is covered. And I recommend doing a couple back and forth stitches to make it extra strong in this high tension area. Next grab your strap adjuster and feed it through the opposite end of that webbing. Grab your other clip and feed that through the webbing and back around. And you're going to want to give yourself enough slack so that way you can feed that end back through the center of that strap adjuster and back out. And once you have it through, go ahead and pull that end all the way out. Then take that edge and roll it over onto itself and make a stitch across. Next, you can go ahead and clip your strap onto the bag. And the final step is to add zipper poles. We're going to be using parachute cords, so go ahead and cut about a four inch piece of parachute cord, feed it through the back end, crisscross it through the top, and then tie it at the top. And then I like to use a lighter to burn those ends so they don't fray. And there you have it, your cross bag is complete. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think. We're going to keep the videos coming at you, so we'll see you next time.